friends. Good morning. Uh, it's a good morning from him and a good morning from me. <laughs> Jeff has asked me to do a reading before he does the lecture. And it's something that uh, I found a little while ago. And I hope it's going to raise the vibrations. Because we believe that spiritualism is about living, not about dying. And uh, we're living in a technological age, so this really fits well into it, I think. And it's simply entitled, Thank God He Doesn't Have Voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> we have all learned to live with voicemail as a necessary art of modern life. But have you wondered, what if God decided to install a voicemail? Imagine praying and hearing this. Thank you for calling my father's house. Please select one of the following options. <laughs> press 1 for requests. Press 2 for thanksgiving. Press 3 for complaints. And press 4 for all other enquiries. What if God used the familiar excuse I'm sorry, all of our angels are busy helping other sinners right now. <coughs> However, your prayer is important to us and will be answered in the order it was received. <laughs> so please stay online. Can you imagine getting these responses as you call God in prayer? If you would like to speak to Gabriel, press 1. <laughs> For Michael, press 2. For the directory of other angels, press 3. Or if you would like to hear King David sing a psalm while you are holding, press 4. <laughs> to find out if a loved one has been assigned to heaven, press 5. <laughs> enter, enter his or her social security number. <laughs> then press the pound key. Oh, if you get a negative response, Try area code 666. <laughs> For reservations at my father's house, please enter John, followed by chapter 3, verse 16. For answers to nagging questions about dinosaurs, the age of the earth, and where Noah's ark is, please wait until you arrive here. <laughs> Our complaints show that you have already prayed once today. Please hang up and try again tomorrow so that others may have a chance to get through. This office is closed from 5 p.m. on Friday, all day Saturday and Sunday. Please pray again on Monday after 9.30 a.m. And if you need emergency assistance when this office is closed, contact your local medium. And now here is <laughs> Good morning! Good morning! I'm the shy one. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that, really, because it's a little different and it uplifts you, you know? And that's what spiritualism is all about. Would you like God to have email? Neither would I, because we all know as spiritualists that we have a direct line to that power that we call God. Whatever you want to call that power. A direct line. We don't have to go to email to reach God. For we know that God resides within each and every one of us. We are part of that great power. We cannot be divorced from that power. For that power lies within everything within not only our world, but within the entire universe. So we don't need email to get in touch with that power. What we need to do, of course, is sit within the quiet, within the power, to go deep within ourselves, where the answers to all of our questions lie. And that is so true. And yet in our world today, we have people who don't believe in that power, even though that power resides within them. For they believe that they can get all the answers from their emails, from their mobile phones, from their iPods. In fact, we see people walking around today almost like the mobile phone is glued to the ear. And yet, and yet, my friends, we don't have to look any further than ourselves. For we are spirit here and now. 
encased in the physical body, of course, so that we can enjoy this time that we chose to come here to this earth plane to learn the very lessons that this earth plane can provide for us. Lessons which are not always pleasant, but lessons that we chose to go through so that we could learn, so that we could progress on our spiritual pathway through this life. And of course, none of us are any different, even though we stand on a platform here and lecture to you, and I don't like that word lecture, because I'm not actually lecturing, but um, even we have to go through the ups and the downs of life, just as you do. But can you imagine, if we didn't, what would we learn coming to this earth plane? One of the lower levels that we can come to, so that we can learn from the ups and downs. Can you imagine if life was a bowl of roses, or a bowl of cherries, whatever you want to say? We wouldn't learn anything, would we? I know we had a beautiful lady here come into our church a couple of years ago, and uh, she was from Pakistan originally, but had moved to our country, to England and the UK. And she had a child, 12 years of age, which she brought in, in a, now what do you call a push chairs, a Michael? A buggy. Is it a buggy you call them? Um, this child was so badly deformed, bless her, that she looked, the only way I can describe her is that she looked like a fetus. She was so badly deformed. But this child had the most amazing smile that you could ever wish to see. Her eyes lit up the room. She was such a happy child. And I remember her mother saying to the medium at the time, has my child come to this earth plane because of something bad she did in a past life? Now that makes you think a little bit, doesn't it? But it didn't make me think really, to be honest with you, because we know as spiritualists, of course she didn't come to suffer for something she did bad in a past life. She chose to come to this earth plane as she is, so that we could learn compassion. How else, my friends, would we learn compassion if everyone in our world and everything was absolutely perfect? You don't have to go to email or to your mobile phone or your iPod to find out these answers. Answers which are so beautiful and so natural. And yet, you see, we look at a child like this and what's happening? We go, oh, Bless that child. We feel sorry for them. But you see, that child didn't want pity, my friends. That child lit up the whole church. She was the happiest little being you could ever wish to meet. So she didn't want us to feel sorry for her. She only wanted us to know that I chose to come here so that you could learn from. And this is what happens throughout our lives. We have these things that happen in our lives so that we can learn from them. So that we can look at them face to face and cha as challenges. Because I do believe that the things that happen in our lives that are not so good are challenges given to us so that we can learn from them and we can overcome them so we can grow spiritually and take that step forward on our spiritual pathway through this life. It is a great opportunity when you think about it, friends. Because, you know, some people might say, Oh, what a terrible life this is. If I'd known it was going to be like this, I wouldn't have come here. But then how would they learn, my friends? How would they learn? They wouldn't. Because they wouldn't have the opportunity of experiencing Things in this earthly life. Things that are beautiful, and we have a beautiful world. Sometimes man doesn't always keep it that way, but never mind, God has provided us with a wonderful world, full of beauty. And yet, my friends, how far do we see that beauty? Sometimes we take it so much for granted that we almost just expect it's going to be there all the time. And yet we have a personal responsibility of not only looking after our world, our earth plane, but looking after one another. Now you might think that, oh, I can get on my mobile phone and I can ring my family or my friends and I'm looking after them. But is this so much more personal? 
when we can speak face to face, when we can give somebody a hug, when we can tell them we love them and how much they mean to us? Is that not better than getting on a phone and saying, oh, well, yes, I, I thought I would ring you this morning just to tell you, yeah, I love you and all of that, you know. Not very personal, is it, you know? And yet today, people seem to have chosen the mobile phone, cell phone, sorry, cell phone you call it here, I'm back in England, you see, uh, cell phone, the iPod and the computer above their spiritual responsibilities. You know, it's not always easy to be spiritual all the time when living in a physical world, because we have people that will come face to face with us that maybe don't like us and the hackers on the back of our neck go up, but at the same time, you know, we have an opportunity to change that in people. We have an opportunity to show them that no matter whether they like us or not, we love them as part of us, part of God, and as our brothers and sisters. Because, you see, as being part of that great creative power, we are then part of each other. So we are intrinsically linked one with the other. So we are brothers and sisters in that power that we call God, or whatever you want to call it. And so we have a great opportunity here upon our earth plane. And as spiritualists, you know, I am very proud and out to be a spiritualist. We've been in spiritualism brought up in the Church of England as children. But, um, and there's nothing wrong with that, my friends. There's nothing wrong with any religion because all <coughs> pathways lead to that one power that we call God. And there is a, a golden thread of truth that runs through all religions. So the person that says to me, we, shouldn't, we should ignore other religions, I don't believe that. For there is something to learn from all religions. The minute we do that, we become like some other religions and we close our minds to just the one thing. Spiritualists have the opportunity every day to open the mind, to stretch the mind, to reach out for all possibilities in this life. And we certainly do, you know. And we have the opportunity to show through our spirituality the gifts of the Spirit. Those gifts that were read about in the Bible. So, you see, I was brought up in the Christian church, and I know the gospel according to St. Paul was the gifts, about the, the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts that we believe in, the gifts of healing, one of the greatest gifts that you could ever have, the gift of healing. And I know there are probably many of you here this morning that are spirit healers, who are channels, I like to say it, for healing. Wonderful gift. And there are many gifts of the Spirit that the Master Jesus touched this earth to show us. Many others before him and many others since. And there will be many other in, in, others in the future will bring those wonderful gifts of the Spirit to this earth plane. Sadly, today many people seem to be more interested in the mobile phone, off, off again. <laughs> the cell phones. Oh, you know what I mean, don't you? Yes. <laughs> the cell phones, the iPod and the computer, than they are in their spiritual pathway. And I find that rather sad, you know, because we can have the best of both worlds. We can create a balance in our world between the spiritual and the physical. And if we can do that, then well, there's so much that we can gain. But when we forget about the spiritual part of our lives and continue just to uh, continue to work only with the physical part, we're missing so much from our lives. And I'm sure you as spiritualists will agree with me there because there is so much for us to learn. The person that comes to me and says, Oh, Jeff, um, I know it all. I get very worried. I get very worried indeed because I haven't yet in my life, 29 years, <coughs> in my lifetime, I haven't met anyone who knows it all. They may think they do, but you know, my friends, no matter how long we live on this earth plane, we know maybe that much. 
There is so much for us to learn if we give the time and the energy to those who wish to draw close to us to bring that wonderful knowledge that life is indeed eternal, that this part of our lives is just a minute part of our lives, that our lives are eternal, eternal. We live forever, for we are pure energy and energy can never ever be destroyed, it can only change its shape and form. And so there is so much for us to learn whilst we're here upon this earth, because none of us knows how long we're going to have. Somebody said to me, oh, I hope you come back next day. I said, well, if I'm still alive, I'd love to. For none of us knows. That is so very true. From being born, we never know how long we're going to be here. But it is an absolute opportunity, is it not, to touch this earth plane, to know that we have an opportunity not only of working with the computer, because yes, the computer and the iPod and the cell phone, oh, I've got it, you see, um, they have their uses, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not trying to uh, push them so far down, but they have their uses. And if we can bring them into use with our spirituality and our spiritual work, then they too have a great purpose. For you see, Without technology, we wouldn't have maybe some of the cures to diseases we have in our world today. But can you imagine, my friends, along with that technology, can you imagine with spiritual healing working hand in hand with those doctors, nurses, surgeons, those technological machines? Can you imagine what progress we could make in our world. Instead of using technology for guns and bombs and wars that kill people, that kill our brothers and our sisters, and what gives us the right to kill a fellow brother or sister? And yet in our world today, what do we see? Every day we wake up to find that someone has killed another person or many people. Tragedy this last week or so in your country this uh, last week, how very sad, how very sad that we don't have in parts of our world the respect and the love and the knowledge of knowing that we are all part of God. Not just the chosen few or one or two of us, but all part of that great creative power. So we have no right, my friends, to kill another brother or a sister. We only have the right to show them the love and the respect that they deserve, do we not? And so, my friends, I would say to you, we have a great opportunity in our world today as spiritualists, not just to come into our churches and our centres and to talk, but to take that wonderful message of the Spirit out into our world, to help our brothers and sisters to have a greater understanding of their true responsibility here upon this earth plane. To enjoy themselves, of course. We wouldn't uh, say that people have, a, have no right to enjoy themselves. Of course they have. But they also have a responsibility not only to themselves, to their brothers and sisters, but to the spirit world and to that great creative power that we call God. And so we could make a difference in our world today. You know, my friends, we speak on the cell phone. And we don't realize that words are creative power, a creative power, they're energy. So whether we speak good words or we speak not so good words, they go out to the ether. They can reach out and touch people. And so when we judge another person, we're judging ourselves. When we give love to another person, we're giving love to ourselves. So what is the best thing to do in our lives? Is it best to go out and love our brothers and sisters? Or is it best to create a feeling of hatred and that I don't care about anybody else but myself? For I think the first one is by far the best. If we can learn to love each other, warts and all, we are we may look in the mirror in the morning, and I know I do, and I think, 
up here I'm 19, but then when I look in the mirror when I come out of the shower, I realise I'm not 19 any longer. And I won't tell you my age, 77. No, but, uh, <laughs> no, but you know, until we learn to love ourselves, my friends, no matter what, how can we possibly learn to love another? It is important that we love ourselves, but it is very important that we share that love, that gift that God has given us so freely, to share and touch the lives of other people. So that we in our own way can maybe, hopefully, improve the lives of those people we come in contact with. A wonderful opportunity we have it and yet in our world today. How many people understand that? How many people look to those maybe who they may call their enemies with love? For you know if we look out and reach out to them with love, maybe in time, we can change their outlook towards one another. Maybe that little thought can change our world. And maybe we can make this world a better world. Maybe we can make this world a world full of love, a world full of positive energy, positive vibrations, that will make this world a beautiful world, which it really is, to live in. So let us not just think about our... Uh, Tell me. Mobile phones, oh what the heck. <laughs> so, and our computers and our iPods and all this technology, yes, use it to the best of our ability. Let it not control our lives, but let us control what is done with that technology to a positive uh, vibration. To use it as positive energy and not as negative energy. And maybe then, and maybe only then, we can change this world. Make the vibrations in our world a positive energy. So that everyone can live within that love and within the power of the Spirit. Thank you for listening.